This is Conrad Nagel inviting you to stay tuned for the next half hour for one of radio's outstanding dramatic productions on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail. And now another Proudly We Hail one of radio's outstanding dramatic half-hours, transcribed coast-to-coast in cooperation with this station and presented by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your host and star on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished star of the theater, screen, radio, and television, Conrad Nagel. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. The bonny, bonny banks of Loch Lomond, eh, Conrad? That's right, Ken. Land of the head of the kilts and the clans. To bonny Scotland for a light comedy entitled Highland Fling and a half hour of fun. Our first act curtain will rise after this very important message. The woman in the Air Force is a woman who has found that it's smart to serve her country. She wears the trim WAF uniform, and she has a good future in a good outfit. If you are between 18 and 34... Go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and ask for details. Be smart. Do it now. And now with your star Conrad Nagel in the role of Duncan Smith, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Highland Fling. When you think of Scotland today, you might think of it as a small, irregularly bordered country sitting like a tattered crown upon the austere head of England. It is a crown divided at its narrow waist into two separate and distinct parts, the lowlands and the highlands. But high or low, to Duncan Smith, it was a country that seemed to typify and champion conditions hard to come upon elsewhere, namely peace and quiet. Or so it was until that summer eventide when he came strolling into the little town of Kilrummy, lost in the heather-locked Grampian Mountains. Oh, I'll take the high road and you take the low road and I'll be in Kilrummy afore ye. Hey, or, hey, uh, 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 stand where you be, he'll sell cards. Hey, hey, wait, what's the idea? Wait a minute, p- p- put on that sword. Assassinac! I'll sacrifice my... Look, will you stop waving that thing around? You're apt to cut both our heads off. Oh, near fear, I'll near touch a hair of my own. But I'll hear yours on the castle wall of all sundown. See your praise, you great long ugly. Grandpa, Grandpa, stop <laughs> No, that. no, but I've got it. De- Look, my... you heard what the lady said. Grandpa, shame on you. Oh, I am sorry. He means no harm, really. It's just that... Oh, wait till the chief hears what you've done, Elaine. He's a sassanac. Here. Give me no, that, no, and stop no, your nonsense. No. Now go straight on home, and don't stop at the pub on the way. Oh, how about it, can I have no sport in this world? There's always a last of the uh, sword out of one hand, and the glass of the other. Please, I hope you won't think... Well, this I don't know quite what to think. You know, it's the first time a pretty girl's ever saved my life. Oh, he wouldn't have done you any harm. He, he gets a little mixed up, that's all. He sometimes thinks he's living in the time of Montrose. Things were different then. Oh, uh, let me take that sword. It must be heavy. Uh, Don't trouble yourself, sir. (laughs) No trouble at all. Tell me, is that Castle Kilrummy up there? Aye, that's it right enough. From here, it looks rather battered. I warrant you'd look battered, too, if you'd been fought over for hundreds of years. (laughs) (laughs) Who's fighting over it now? Well, the clans, of course. I, I don't follow you. What clans? What clans? Why, the McMurdochs, the rightful owners of the castle. And those dirty, black, thieving spawns of the devil, the McMurrays. McMurray? Hey, McMurray! Hey, hey, put that thing down. Look, <laughs> is there an inn or a tavern I could stay at? Hi, there's a fine bit of a tavern on the McMurdoch side. Colin, one of my cousins, he's the proprietor. He'll not teach you much. You said McMurdoch side. McMurdoch side of what? Of Kilromi. It's divided into two parts. Oh. <laughs> Hey, just how many hundreds of years has this little spat been going on? Mm, over 500. And all for that, that old relic? 
I can tell your name Highland Mon. No, no, I'm an American. An My American? name is... An American? Well, yes, that's so terrible. They said when that botany-legged rooster of the McMurray died, he left the castle to a distant kin in America. Out of spite, or maybe it was out of the knowledge that none of his kind was fit to be laird. Would you happen to be the new laird of Castle Kilrumi? Well, yes, but you see, and I'm... To think that I've been walking and talking with a McMurray. I the shame of it. Give me back that sword. If I was not a woman, no, I no, could... No, no, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'll nay wait another second. I might have known a McMurray sneaking up and taking advantage of a harmless woman. Get over on your own side of the road. I'll promise you, you'll rue the day you ever came this way. Hey, look, you've got it all wrong. Don't I... you ever speak to me again, you devil. Uh, excuse me, are you Mr. McMurdoch? I'm Colin Donald Bean Kirkcaldy McMurdoch at your service. Are you just passing through or are you staying on a bit? Do you have overnight accommodations? The finest in all Scotland. If you didn't mind sharing the bed with a wee bonny cow or two. <laughs> well, I can stand it if they can. Good man. Uh, good man. I was joshing you. You've come a long way? Yeah, I left the train at Aberfeldy. Then you must be somewhat dry. You're a discerning man. I'm that. <clears throat> now put your name down in this book and I'll give you something to take the dust out of your throat. Oh, thank you. Hey, not many strangers pass this way. We're not exactly in the midst of things. That uh, isn't the impression I got. All right, see how this suits your whistle. Hmm. Magic. Ah, magic. Duncan Smith. Now, what kind of a name is that? Tis neither fish nor fowl. My mother was Scotch. See, that explains the Duncan. My father was a smith. Well, that explains the Smith. Uh, it's a, you couldn't change it to Max Smith. Somehow it seems a shame to spoil such a broad name as Duncan. That's a king's name with a, a Smith. There's no sound to it, no feel. It lies empty in a man's mouth. <laughs> yes, I, I admit it isn't exactly unusual, but I'm stuck with it. Why don't you call me Duncan? Uh -huh. Oh, well, I could do that. Colin. Uh, cousin Elaine, you know I never allow a woman in my top room. It's not decent. I realize that. But I know a thing you and all here should know. And it's not me you'll be putting out of this place. What kind of woman's talk is that? That man. He's the new laird of Castle Kilrummy. He's a Mac Murray. <coughs> a Mac? Are you daft, lassie? He told me so himself. His name is Smith. He wrote it here in the book. What's a name in a book? Ask him if he's not the new laird. <coughs> Will, Manny? Well, now, you, you've got it all wrong. I'm waiting for ye to make it right. Are ye the new laird? Well, yes, but... Why? 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 I'll throttle the lot of you. We've got to be calm and judicious about this matter. Every man deserves a fair trial, even a low McMurray. Bruce! Summon the clan. Lonnie, get a rope. A strong rope. I am As chief of the clan, McMurdoch, I'll have quiet. Would you hear the McMurray's known we got their prize? Hey, give me my cane, Lord, and I'll make us spot on the big Shut your mouth, gaffer, or I'll send you home to bed. Oh, no. Now, it is the law of the clan that before sentence is passed on any man, even a McMurray has a right to speak his piece. Take the gag out of his mouth. <laughs> I said take it out, not push it in. <coughs> hey, any manners, Malcolm. <laughs> I suppose you have something to say. Long in the tongue is the McMurray characteristic. Look, is there a constable in this town? There is. One in this side of the town and one in the other. What would ye wear, constable? I have a good mind to prefer charges of assault and battery against the whole crazy lot of you. Well, then, prefer them. I'm the constable. Oh, no. Look, I can take a joke as well as the next man. But this is going just a little too far. Where did you see a much better in goods? <laughs> hey, 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 I'll have order. Bruce, shut your great yap. Give me the claymore. One and more peep out of you, gaffer, and it's home to bed. Now, 
What were you saying? That before I'm through, I'll have the whole lot of you thrown into jail. Hmm? You saw me write my name in your register. Duncan Smith. That's what it is. That's what it's always been. And I am pleased, greatly pleased, to say that as far back as I can trace my ancestry, I have not one drop, not one corpuscle of either McMurdoch or McMurray blood in me. Oh, the man seems to have taken offense. Why, you said yourself that your own mother was of this land. Her name was Wallace. Wallace. But you admitted your own self that you're the new laird. That's right, I'm the new owner. In a moment of weakness, I bought your precious castle from a man named Edward McMurray. I bought it because he wanted to get rid of it and sold it to me for a very low price. Oh, no. I bought it because I've always been interested in Scotland and in its history. I thought possibly I might restore this castle or at least have some fun poking around in it. However, events have changed my mind. I think I'll have it torn down and sold for stone. Oh, no. And if you'd like any further proof, here are the deeds and all the other papers. Oh, oh what? The... Oh, no! No, Tim! No, quiet! 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 Do you hear me? We owe this man an apology. The clan yeah, was... Apology won't be necessary. Huh. I'd just like to get out of here. Well, perhaps we've been a wee bit hasty, sir. But now, having tried the hospitality of the McMurdochs, and very nearly being hung for it, I think I'll try the McMurray's. Oh, man! You couldn't need do such a terrible thing like that. Oh, man! Yes, I can. Good evening. Oh, no! You would tell you McMurray to sell kill rummy to such a rude man. I'd strike the whole lot of them stone dead with my bare feet. I'll, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Will you be still? Ain't none of you the brains of a goat. Do you realize it is the first time in over 200 years that the castle does not legally belong to a McMurray? No. no Aye, no, that no. sinks Why? into your clappers. It is our great chance, even though the red-headed cousin of mine nearly scotched it. We must hold an immediate council of war. And if we are canny, there's a chance that Kalrami may be gloriously returned to its rightful owners. The McMurdoch's! Don Ramnagel, starring in the role of Duncan Smith in the proudly we hail production Highland Fling, will return in just a moment for the second act. Who's the smartest woman of the year? Why, the woman who puts on that new blue uniform of the United States Air Force. Smartly tailored and neatly groomed, she's being seen more and more around the nation these days. She's smart in another way, too. She started a great career as a WAF, one of the women in the Air Force working side by side with the men of the Air Force. She wears her Air Force blue proudly with a sense of personal accomplishment because she's doing a needed job in administration, in radio as a technician or operator, in the medical service as a technician, or in hundreds of other interesting fields. More and more young women, 18 to 34, are finding out that the thing to do is to put on the smart blue uniform worn by the women in the Air Force. Get complete details at the United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. How about you? Can you qualify? You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now with your star Conrad Nagel in the role of Duncan Smith, we present the second act of Highland Fling. I beg your pardon. And will you should, banging at the door and waking a body up in the middle of the night. It's past nine, one. What do you want here? Are you Fergus McMurray? Well, that all depends. Depends? Depends on what? On who it is that wants to know and why. My name is Smith. I have a letter from your grandnephew in America, Edward. He asked me to deliver it to you. Edward? Edward is not coming here, is he? No, I don't think so. Oh, he... good. Come away in, one. We'll talk a bit. Wipe your boots and keep your voice low. <laughs> Castle to Edward. A canny man was Roderick. Even in his grave, he'd take no chances with the McMurdochs. We Edward as laird and living in America, there's little enough any of that clan of Satan can do to try and get the castle back in their evil clutches. But if you rightly own it, how can they take it from you? 
Uh, I can see you have not had the misfortune of making any of their acquaintance. Don't, man. I warn you. Warlocks and witches, the whole pack of them, who are drumly tricks. Twice in the last year, they've summoned up spirits of their black ancestry to haunt their castle. I look amazed, but I can, it's true. Mr. McMurray, I think it's time I told you something, and it's going to come as a shock. Shock? I'm too strong a man to be shocked. There is nothing in this world or the next that can shock Fergus McMurray. What would you tell me? Well, um, it's in the letter there. Edward McMurray sold Castle Kilrami to me. I'm sometimes a wee bit deep. Uh, the McMurrays no longer own the castle. I do. You own the castle? Yes, that's right. I have all the papers here, and I... I... Good Lord. Mr. McMurray. I didn't realize you. Well, for an instant, I didn't think you were real. I thought I was seeing a ghost. See, the way the light shone down through the window slits up there, it caught you in its shaft, and it was though you were a phantom who'd once been mistress here. I, I'm sorry to spoil your illusion. Perhaps if you come here at night, you'll see a real ghost. Oh, I've heard all about them. Uh, McMurdoch ghosts. Of course. No McMurray would ever have the stuff to come back. You... You must be very angry with me. Well, see, I make it a habit never to stay angry with pretty young lassies very long. You're know, free enough with your tongue. <laughs> but I like the compliment. No compliments, the truth. Elaine the Fair. Elaine with the reddest hair in all Scotland. You, you make a girl blush. Uh, what are you doing here? Looking like you. Now that the McMurray's no longer own the castle, they kind of keep us off. Uh, this is the first time I've ever been inside like this. I feel... Well, I feel at home. Yes, it does get you, doesn't it? Mm. You know, all that happened here, and now the quiet, the ruins of yesteryear, echoing, re-echoing to other sounds, other times. Aye, you put it so poetically. And for a man named Smith, it's fair astonishing. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, suppose we show each other around. You, you'll not tear it down as you threatened to do. Well, not today. Come along with you. see all over the whole world. You know, to stand on the battlements of this tower, I should be wearing a sword. <laughs> Your grandfather's, and a kilt. And a bunny hat with a black cock's feather. And you, a long green gown with a belt of jewels. We standing here watch the enemy approach. The McMurray's. Coming up through the glen. And we McMurdoch's ready. Their numbers are greater, but our hearts are stronger. Ah, our men are bonny and gay, their great swords ready to bite deep for hearth and home. This is the sword, hammered and wrought by Gillian for Gillian. <laughs> hey, isn't it time we had a trumpet call or something to shout defiance to the whole Aye. world? Been... Hey, now, what's that? What? We've been taken from the rear. Look, it's the whole of Murray clan filling the courtyard. They never could fight fair. Mr. Smith, come do and we'd hear a word for you. Well, uh, what's the trouble? No trouble, except that you might like to know you're consulting with a witch up there. Well, thanks for the information. What can I do for you? Will you come doing like I say? Don't be doing. It's some trick they're up to. I know them. God, what can they do to me? Well, there's me. A minute ago you were defending me against the barbarians, and now you're ready to go have words with well, me. Well, Mr. Smith. Uh, I like it up here. What's your business? Uh, you're a very difficult man, and I don't favor shouting my lungs out. If you'll nay come to and I'll send a few of the lads up to help you. I, I told you that I meant no good. I don't budge till I know what you want. All right, I'll tell you. We're going to do you the very great honor of adopting you into the clan McMurray. Aye. It will may cost you a bobby, and it will save you from the clutches of that no good rabble, the back murder. Now will you come down? Adopt you? But that's what we... Oh, well, you can't let them do it. It would mean you'd be a McMurray and they'd still have the castle. Yes, I realize that. Couldn't be that's why you've been so friendly to what? me. Oh, the McMurdochs are more subtle, a pretty lass to catch the fish. McMurray's make no bones about it. Are you dead up there? Well, thanks for the invitation, Mr. McMurray. 
But you see, I never joined clubs. Clubs! Who asked you to join a club? We're adopting you into the clan, man, whether it's I or nay, you say. It's nay, so come and get me. I'm... Elaine, look, see if we can move that big slab over the opening. You, you're not angry with me? Furious, come on. We've got to strike for hearth and home. I... Oh, you bad One bad You hear the tower of home the sun goes down. Hey, McMurray! Tired? Not a bit. Did you see me hit that ugly devil with that bit of rock? <laughs> You've got excellent aim. <laughs> yeah, I hope we haven't killed any of them. Five times they've come against us, and five times we've thrown them back. Well, flinging rocks down on the heads of the helpless isn't quite like lunging with a claymore. Ah, don't let it bother you. You're a great fighter. Different times, different weapons. Hey, they're awfully quiet. What do you suppose they're up to? Probably going to get a ladder. A ladder? Oh, they couldn't do a thing like that. It's not fair. You see what kind of people they are. <laughs> <laughs> hey! We realize you're a foreigner to these parts and not fully acquainted with our customs. So with sympathy in our hearts and respect to your position as lair, we'll give you one last chance. And when you may come down and be adopted peaceably, we're only trying to save you from yourself. I and shall defend I... this tower to the death, Mr. McMurray. I join no clubs. Clubs! Clubs is in free the night! Listen! Good Lord, look! It's the clan! They've come to our rescue! Look, there's Colin! Hooray! Come on, Lord, don't smash him once and for all! Hey, this is terrible. You know somebody's apt to get hurt. It's terrible, it's beautiful. And we can sit up here and watch the whole thing. Colin! Colin! Look, look, isn't that your grandfather? Good Lord, he's got that sword. Good. Maybe he'll chop a few heads off. Hey, this isn't funny anymore. Fergus McMurray, your clan has done its last foul deed. We come to rescue the leaders of our castle. Oh, your castle. The on, is dark. This is McMurray ground you trespass on. You're ah. both wrong. It's neither. It's my land. Smithland. <laughs> We're going to change all that for yours. We'll rescue you, lad. Never fear. Send the child. Now, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, hey, wait. Oh, All right. Now sit down, both of you. Now, nay, sit in the same room with a man. All right, stand then, but be still. I'll take nay orders. This is my castle. I invited you here, even though you both came uninvited yesterday. The only good thing about yesterday is that nobody was killed. Why? I can't understand. We made mash of them. You made mash of them. Now, let's get this straight once and for all. This ridiculous feud between you people is centered on the castle, is that correct? That is correct. It was McMurdoch built and McMurray held. All right, Mary I don't care held. about that. Right now, I own it. That means that neither of your clans has the right of possession. And that means there's no longer any reason for this feud. You can start acting like normal human beings again. Well? Uh, you mean... You mean you'll not take sides? You, you'll put an end to it? Exactly. I want no part of it after what I saw yesterday. End of the feud? Well, well Mon, you couldn't do a thing like that. I, what would there be to live for? Well, Mon might just as well be. What else is there besides sheep and mountains? It is a sad day for the clan. A sad, sad day. Oh, it is the first time in over 500 years that a McMurder has agreed with a McMurray. But I must agree... A very, very sad day for the clan. It was a dreadful thing you did, Duncan. In two months, kill Rummy has, has become... had more peace and quiet than it's had in over 500 years. Will you not change your mind? Let us make you a McMurdoch. Even the McMurrays will agree to that. Well, 
Will you not let me make you a smith? Oh, don't joke. I'm not joking, Elaine Lafayre. I've lost my heart to you. Will you have it? It's not much to give, I know. You, you want to marry me? Yes. I want to marry you and make you the lady of this castle. Uh, if I married you, then I'd not only become a smith, but you'd become a McMurdo. That's the law of the clan. Would you have me at the price? Would you have me if it was otherwise? Oh, Duncan, you know I would. Hey, just think. We can be married and the feud can start again. Yes, and all kill Rummy will go wild with joy. Oh, deliriously. And you? I. Oh, I'll be your own heart's darling evermore. Now, now let's go down to the village and tell them all the news. Hey, what, 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 what's that? Oh, it's the McMurdoch ghost. Uh, I shouldn't wonder you've made him happy, too. Ghost? Don't be silly. You did not think it was a McMurray ghost. That kind haven't got the color. Well, does, uh, does this ghost play here every oh, night? No, only on special occasions. Why doesn't he sound bonny? Look, there's someone down there in the courtyard. Hmm. Look, I can see them moving. Hey! Hey! Stand where you be! Or I'll call you! Grandpa! Grandpa, you go home to bed! Our star, Conrad Nagel, will return in just a moment with a word about next week's show. Registered nurses... The United States Air Force Medical Service offers you a great opportunity to serve your country and further your own career. Yes, you can become a commissioned officer with good pay and allowances while you receive postgraduate training in anesthesia, operating room management and techniques, nursing administration, and other related fields. Nurses with special qualifications may train as flight nurses at the famous Air Force School of Aviation Medicine. For complete information, write to the Surgeon General, United States Air Force, Washington 25, D.C. Do it now. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Conrad Nagel. Highland Fling was written by DeWitt Cop. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Conrad Nagel. Friends, we hope you'll be with us again over this same station for Proudly We Hail for a story full of suspense. Our play next week is entitled The Trial, which you won't want to miss. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.